Hello and welcome. My name is Lauren. And I'm Jordan. This is an American Learns video. Um, we still haven't fixed the <laughs> background situation, but that's okay. Um, we are going back to not just bikes. This is going to be the first part of the video we watched last time. So last time I think we were on, it was like, we watched like part four or something. Um, so we're going to go back and start watching from the beginning. <laughs> so this is the truth about American cities, part one. Strong towns. So we've we've already established that this city is gorgeous. And absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> that's that's so far what we know. That's what we've established. So nice and walkable. I'm sure he's gonna mention all those different oh, things. Oh yeah. He definitely it. has a video about walkable cities that I think I've seen. But I'm looking forward to see about what is the truth about American cities. And am I going to be saddened? Or jealous. What do you think? Saddened or jealous? Mm, saddened. Saddened. Okay. Saddened. From the very beginning of Not Just Bikes, I had planned to do a series of videos about a U.S. nonprofit organization called Strong Towns. Okay. Didn't they have produced a, a lot of great content online already, but I think their message is too important not to share with my audience on YouTube as well. If you have watched this channel before, you'll know that I've traveled all over the world and developed my own ideas about what makes a city great. Strong Towns is really interesting to me because they came to many of the same conclusions that I did, but from a totally different perspective. And they fundamentally changed the way I looked at cities, and especially city financing. Okay. I've learned over the years that when it comes to city design, the Netherlands does this better than almost any other country in the world. Nevertheless, I sometimes see Dutch people in the comments of my videos speaking enviously about the spacious roads and suburbs in the United States. To me, that makes this Strong Town series of videos important. Have it. Oh no. Suburbs. I just spent um like a weekend with my with my family and it's just like Man, I can't, it's like, I needed to, I forgot some, like, toiletries. So it's like, I needed to go to Walgreens to get, like, a nail file and, like, contacts, like, little things. And I was like, I have to drive to the Walgreens. I was like, but it's just, and it's, like, a mile away, but there's not, like, a, a sidewalk, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, look, I'm like, where I live, there's, like, three Walgreens within 15 minutes of me if I walk slow. They're designed, they're designed around cars. They're bad for our health because we don't actually use our, our we don't use the body we have for moving or walking. Um, drives up cost of health care. Uh, creates no sense of community because people don't tend to interact. Uh, I just have so many, so many qualms about this as an organizer and person who was actually concerned about our state is humans. <laughs> I will say, um, as far as the community thing goes, at least the suburb where I grew up did have a stronger sense of community than I feel here. Mm. Um, but like part of that was, you know, like somebody in the community had organized a co-op and like it had like the names of all of the families with kids. And that way, like you always had the phone number. So if you needed someone, you know, to organize a play date or if you need to go away somewhere, there's like a whole list of people who are in the community within a walking distance who you already know are willing to watch your kid if you need like an emergency thing. Mm -hmm. So like and then they planned they planned events. They did like barbecues and like um, every winter, like there'd be a big bonfire around Christmas time with like and like so they did plan these certain events. And we did know almost every, we knew everybody. Um which was different when I did move to a city. It's like suddenly it's like I you don't talk to your neighbors anymore. But you know, so and I think that 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 is so. You, just to say, like I know you moved to a city, so like I lived in them for quite some time. I feel like that that is about a lot of the new development. Mm. A lot of these people are moving into cities who don't know each other. Like for instance, where I live now here in Chicago. Like, a lot of us are, like, but a lot of the transplants who are from cities we've noticed, we interact. That happened in Seattle, too. The people who were interacting and kind of, like, building community within even this new space, they've only been in for a year or two years, were from bigger metropolitan areas because there's a way to navigate city community that's a little different than those smaller communities. Okay. It does, to some sense, have to be a little more intentional, and it does look different. It's a lot of times touch and go, you know, and out in Seattle, while, like, almost like ever, like effortlessly accidentally building community there. Um, something I learned from some of the older men out there who were witnessing me 
was that uh, as a New Yorker was that people on the West Coast are nice but not kind, mm-hmm. but people on the East Coast are kind but not nice. Because yeah. I'm not nice. That's that's true. <laughs> I I grew up as an East Coast like East Coast girl, so I'm just like yeah yeah we. We'll, we will, uh, we sometimes remember to be polite, <laughs> but like, we're going to tell you the truth, but also it's like a person from the East coast is more likely to like, you know, they see someone on the side of the road to like stop and help them change their tire, you know, like, but roll their they, eyes they, the they will be like berating you the whole time. Like you are a stupid son of a, how do you not know how to do this? There you go. It's freaking fixed. Be careful, you dumbass. Learn how to change a tire. And then they go. And it's like, but they helped you change it. Mm. You know, they weren't nice while they were doing it. But but they did. They do the, they do the kind thing. And I think that might be a big reason, like, why I have hang-ups about the word nice. I'm like, I just, mm. it does, it feels disingenuous. Yeah. But, like, kind, I'll take the kind. But in any case. And to my whole audience, as they have a lot to teach us about the problems with American-style city design. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of strong towns and some of their core topics that will be discussed later in this series. Strong Towns was started in 2008 by Charles Marone. He says his friends oh, call Charles. him Chuck, so I guess I'll call him Charles. <laughs> Charles worked as a civil engineer in Minnesota, and he noticed that the cities and towns he worked for were growing and building lots of roads and infrastructure that he helped to design. But somehow, these growing cities were also going deeper and deeper in debt every year. Mm-hmm. In short, they were building lots of roads and development projects, but still going broke. He discovered this wasn't just something that happened in his part of the country. Rather, towns and cities all over the United States, and in Canada too, were on a similar path of decline. And it all stemmed from the American pattern of city development that had started after the Second World War. All these Strong Towns calls this houses. the suburban experiment a method of development that is drastically different than any other in the history of cities. But I'll talk about that in more detail in a future video. As Charles started investigating further, it became clear that the American system of growth and development was fundamentally broken, and it has guaranteed the decline of American cities. Now for me, that's about where I stopped. Personally, I had moved cities so many times that I no longer had a home anymore. There was no incentive for me to stay in any one place and fight to make it better. Instead, my wife and I researched what we thought was the best place in the world for us to live and did everything we could to move there. Charles, on the other hand, was braver, more patriotic, and maybe crazier, depending on the way you look at it. He realized there were places in America that were not broken, places that had built wealth and prosperity and that could do it again. The downtowns, the main streets, the streetcar suburbs of the early 20th century. These were places that had good bones and could be built upon to rebuild American cities. Once you learn about strong towns, you'll start to understand why car-dependent suburbia can't continue. It's not a matter of preference or how people want to live. These places simply cannot sustain themselves. But it's also like, I just for me at least, I'm just like, if you could live in a place where you don't have to drive everywhere, why would you choose to, to not? Like, does it, do you really want to spend your 45 minutes commu- commuting to work? Like, I, I, I think that it's... every day, I just feel like... If, why would you choose that if you have another option? I, I think that um, a lot, and I think he does talk about this in the one we watched beforehand, mm-hmm. and it's like a, to a little tinge, is like the propaganda specifically. I have a huge gripe against Henry Ford, not only for getting reparations for the money he lost when the Nazis lost, because he built so much things for them, but for the propaganda of pushing cars and these infrastructures. And it became a, 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 a very like heavy part of American Zach guys to mm-hmm. con- to use a car. So now that's why we we associate them with freedom and we associate them with um, being able to go where you want to, when you want to, and you, but you could have As long done as that. you have money to pay for gas. As long as you have money to pay for gas and repairs and you don't care about the environment to some extent, um, yeah, you'll be fine. And it's in a... Uh, it, it's just... It's... I got a lot to say about it. I think it's a little <laughs> destructive as we can like necessarily see. And I... I it's it's a huge thing, it's especially when it comes to the building these highways and the uses of it for redlining and how much city planning as an issue really, really disturbs our, our daily our, our 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 daily social standings. Yeah. Um. You know. Yeah, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. <laughs> we'll attack. I believe There's that the material of, of strong towns is absolutely necessary to understanding how successful cities work. 
So as this channel progresses, I'm going to be slowly building a library of videos on the concepts presented in Strong Towns. Topics such as the growth Ponzi scheme, the idea that American suburbs are literally a Ponzi scheme, a development pattern that constantly needs more growth and often more debt in order to keep them solvent, why American cities are broke, why cities all over the US and Canada never seem to have enough money for roads, bridges, water mains, or in some cases, even basic city services. I'm looking forward to that video. That sounds Traditional like development. Interesting. How is it that beat up old downtowns like this one in my hometown actually generate more money for the city than the shiny big box stores on the periphery? The Strode, the most dangerous, inefficient, and financially reckless way to build a street. So in future videos, I'll discuss <laughs> these and many more topics about how and how not to build a prosperous city. Okay, so this is like now since this video. is not just bikes, Great. I'm going to use these topics as an opportunity to trash talk North American cities. Great. I mean seriously, Me look too. at how ugly this is. But hopefully, in the spirit of strong towns, I can talk about how these things can be improved too. And of course, to also serve as a warning to any cities wanting to emulate the American pattern of development. Please don't. So for all of you out there too lazy to just read Please the don't. damn book that Strong Towns published last year, uh, that's stick me. around as we'll explore the ultimate guide to building strong towns. I'm going to check that book I'd out. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my supporters on Patreon who pay right, me to so summarize all the So this video is more of a explanation, it seems like, um, about the things that are going to happen in the next couple of episodes, which is going to be interesting, I think. Yeah, and I'm um, excited for us to continue reacting to these. And yeah, see. no, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. And it's like considering that, you know, we, we managed to have at least five minutes of things to say as yeah. well. So it's like good for us. It's <laughs> so like that's the reason we're going to sort of break it down, I think, because I feel like you and I will have stuff to say. Uh, sometimes I might consider putting like two videos together in this kind of situation, but I feel like you and I will definitely have stuff to talk about regardless. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I gotta, I gotta, I feel like I'm going to have a Henry Ford rants. All it, right. I am ready <laughs> for your Henry Ford rants. A lot Ford. of Henry right. Ford rants. <laughs> well, I mean, like, can we talk about the assembly line nonsense that like, that ruins um, like, how we think about working? Like, but how many of you, and I would love for people to put that in the comments, how many of you were given the propaganda in elementary school of like, how amazing that that was a part? Of yep. this brainwashing. Oh, Henry yep. Ford's so amazing. Henry Ford's so amazing. Dude, I it's, went I grew up in Baltimore, right? And that was where like the canning plant was or whatever. Mm. That was the first assembly line. So it was just like we literally went to a the a fa the factory and like they had us seven year olds doing like the assembly line project. Like we were learning all about it and doing it and like learning about how it like revolutionized industry and like changed how we do it forever and it's so great and amazing and it's like oh wait this kind of like it's like we've completely like and no wonder it's getting automated now which is it you know it's like they turned humans into robots first like mm. it's it's like oh right and then you have oh, thank god for labor laws but like come on they didn't exist at that point. <laughs> They're getting ripped away now. Yes, they are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, we'll, we will probably have a little bit more of a Henry Ford rant at some point. Uh, so stick around if you're looking forward to that. Um, and we will see you all in the next one. Bye -bye. For tough, for strong. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>